in solidarity with an action in London where they have recruited over 3,500 people to form a human chain around Parliament. And it's probably going on right now, uh, and it started several hours ago. And I know that it's possible to see it happening live online, but, but we're here instead. Tekla, he, he has, thank you. <laughs> Julian Assange is now in Belmarsh prison since 2019. He's been there two years. And the U UN Human Rights uh, Marvin said, really, he is being tortured. He's in very, he is in very bad health. Uh, and the treatment in Belmarsh is making it worse. For seven years before that, he claimed asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, which was in effect solitary confinement. Granted, it was solitary confinement in a relatively pleasant place compared to most prisons, but it's still solitary confinement, and that in itself is close to torture. He's now in bad health. And the U.S. is charging the U.S. is charging him with espionage of all things. Britain has has decided to extradite him to the U.S., where he will undoubtedly be incarcerated in one of the U.S.'s worst prisons. And the U.S.'s worst prisons are unbelievably awful. And I think what it comes down to is the U.S. going to kill him slowly or kill him fast, unless we could stop it, which would be marvelous. Yeah. <laughs> the U.S., Britain, Sweden, and other Western governments have made an unrelenting, massive smear campaign on him and an unrelenting, massive legislative campaign against Julian. Ever since 2010, when WikiLeaks started releasing hundreds of thousands of top secret government documents, I believe that he has not committed any crime. Uh, well, except crime is what the government makes it. Um, and the hope for outcome on their part is to so terrify investigative journalists that they won't do any more investigations. And they may even be able to make possession of classified documents a crime. And that is what is extremely scary about this. It, the, the end of freedom of the press and freedom of the press is absolutely ne is necessary to have democracy. Our speaker today is John Quigley. He is Professor Emeritus at the Moritz Law School. I keep forgetting its name. He is an author with an extensive bibliography. Thank you, Dedla. Good. Is this coming through? All right. Uh, yeah, it's appropriate that we're gathered here by the statue of uh, William McKinley. Um, if you look at the inscription by his statue, uh, it's an inscription about peace and the importance of, of uh, avoiding conflict. Um, McKinley was an interesting character because that, that was his point of view, except he got swept up in something, unfortunately, in 1898 um, uh, and began a war against Spain that led to our colonization of the Philippines for the next half century. Um, and 
The war that he started was a war based on prevarication. Unfortunately, Julian Assange was not around in 1898 to expose what was being said by William McKinley in order to start the war against uh, Spain. Uh, what he said was that the Spanish had blown up a U.S. warship in Havana Harbor, uh, and that was the reason why we were going to war against Spain. In fact, the Spanish government did not blow up the ship in Havana Harbor. The ship blew up because of a problem in, in on the ship itself. It was an accidental explosion uh, that killed a large number of sailors. Um, but it, the war was started on the basis of, of, of this uh, lie. The Spanish government even had offered to have an independent inquiry into the question of why the ship blew up and McKinley uh, declined to participate in that and instead began war. But, but what we're here today for is a, is a current issue that involves government prevarication and government cover-up uh, in engaging in war in other parts of the world. Uh, and that's really what is at the heart of the prosecution now against Julian Assange, that he and the WikiLeaks organization, uh, as Tetla said, um, made public a large number of classified documents about the Afghanistan war and about the Iraq war. Uh, it was something like 90,000 documents about the Afghanistan war and 400,000 documents about the Iraq war. And if you read the indictment, the indictment for espionage that Tetla was mentioning that he's charged with espionage, you can read it online. If you Google Julian Assange uh, indictment, you, you'll get the indictment. Uh, and it recites the fact that WikiLeaks made public about 90,000 documents on Afghanistan and 400,000 documents on, uh, on Iraq. Uh, and so that's the basis for the espionage charge uh, against him. Uh, the charge is based on a section in the federal code uh, that makes it a crime to uh, uh, disclose documents that will be to the injury of the United States. That's the word. To the injury of the United States or to the advantage of a foreign power. It's a very odd statute because you think of espionage as being, you know, something that somebody does secretly and, and gives information to another country. Uh, but this statute is uh, much broader, and it just uh, penalizes making public. And it has a penalty of a maximum of 10 years. So he's facing a maximum of 10 years in, in federal prison if uh, convicted. And he's presently, as Hethel said, in the Belmarsh prison in London. Uh, he has been kept there now for about two years having been arrested by the, uh, the government of the UK on an extradition request from the United States. So the United States is trying to extradite him, uh, and it's gone through some legal process in London, and in June, the um, minister, I think it's called the interior minister uh, in the UK, uh, decided that he should be extradited and issued an order for him uh, to be extradited. He is now appealing that order uh, to the Supreme Court in the UK, and that is still pending. So it, it's still uh, questionable as to whether he will actually be uh, extradited. Uh, and this uh, poster shows exactly what the issue is. Uh, in the extradition proceeding in the UK. Uh, the UK and the United States have an extradition treaty, and Article 4 of that extradition treaty uh, says that while 
ordinary criminal offenses should be the subject of extradition. There should not be extradition on political charges if it's a political uh, issue, uh, which it, it seems the, the Assange situation certainly uh, uh, is. It's, it's that he made public information that was very uncomfortable for the United States. The documents that were made public about uh, Iraq uh, show much more killing of civilians that went on during the, the occupation of Iraq by the United States. Um, so in any event, that's the issue uh, for the Supreme Court of the UK now. Uh, and it, it's a very unfortunate that the lower courts have so far said that he is subject to extradition despite Article 4 of, of that uh, uh, treaty. Uh, so we, we you know, often think of the courts in the UK as following the rule of law, uh, but in, in this situation it doesn't seem to be the case at least so far, but as I say, the case will still go to the, the Supreme Court there. Uh, but it, it's certainly improper for the United States to be requesting extradition uh, on a situation of, of this uh, kind. Uh, so you've got uh, 